Hey book lovers, my name is Victoria and welcome to My Books to Me. Today I will be doing a review of Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I finished this just last week and oh my god it was amazing. I've already posted a review on my blog about this book and I had trouble like making sentences to describe how good this book was. So hopefully I can speak words that tell you how good this book was. So the book is set in a fantasy world where it is divided by blood, being red and silver. Everyone with red blood are normal human beings, but they are forced to be like the slaves of society. They build everything, they work the land, they go off to war and they die for the country. And usually they live in poverty. And to make things even more interesting, when a red turns 17, if they don't have a job or an apprenticeship, they are conscripted to fight in the never-ending war that has been going on for a century and really doesn't have a winner. The Silvers, on the other hand, are the elite of society as they possess god-like superpowers. And they don't do much, they just sit around and just bathe in their glory. So the story follows this girl called Mare who is a red a few months away from turning 17. She doesn't have a job or an apprenticeship and she has known for a long time that she is destined to be conscripted like her three older brothers. And in order to help her family, she is a pickpocket. She steals money and food and power rations and anything really just to help her parents and younger sister get through. And her parents actually really frown on this. They think she should be more like her younger sister Giza, who has an apprenticeship and she has a future. She's not gonna go off to war. But Mare has known for a long time that she's going to war and she just wants to help her family. So one night when she's out pickpocketing at a local bar, she goes to pickpocket this guy, but he has quick reflexes and stops her. But he doesn't like get her arrested or anything or harms her. He actually gives her some money. She really explains her life story, saying that she's destined for the war front and she's just trying to help her family. And then the next day, she is called up to the palace where the royals are staying for the summer. And it turns out she's got a job as a servant for the Queen's Trial. So the Queen's Trial is where a young lady from each of the high houses shows off her powerful abilities to impress the king or queen so that she may be chosen to marry one of the two princes. And while waiting on all these elites, Mare discovers that she has a silver superpower despite her red blood. She has the ability to control electricity and she fears that the king and queen are just going to kill her because she's a threat. But the king and queen realize that she's pretty powerful and could help them. Apart from the never-ending war that's going on, the Scarlet Guard is terrorizing the capital. The Scarlet Guard is a group of Reds who are trying to bring down the Silvers to bring about equality. So having Mare as a powerful Silver in the forefront of Silver society, they hope that they can squash the Scarlet Guard and maybe have a chance at winning the war. So now Mare has a whole new identity for the new power she possesses and she has to learn to be a princess because she has been betrothed to their youngest son, Maven. And to make matters worse, the guy who the guy who she pickpocketed the night before, his name's Cal, and he just happens to be the crown prince. So Mare has to do with he, with her feelings for Cal and just dealing with Maven, who is a really nice kid, and then learning how to be a prince. She is taught protocol and how to be like a lady. She's taught which houses possess which power and which colors are theirs. And she eventually starts training to learn how to harness and control her power. And she realizes she can't just leave and go home because they're probably going to kill her. So she has to stay and just live the life of a silver, which would mean in a few weeks moving back to the capital away from the stilts, which is her home. So she has a plan. She is going to join the Scarlet Guard to bring down the Silvers from the inside. And then this is where things get so interesting. There are some, there are some action scenes in here. There's a lot of like romance and betrayal and plot twists and it just gets amazing. Victoria Aviat has managed to create a world that is just brilliant. Like brilliant. There is a lot of action that happens in about the last 100 pages. Literally, the world you thought you knew about Red Queen completely shifts and you're left sitting there going, holy crap, what just happened? And you 
sort of don't see, okay, some people might see the plot twist coming along, I for one didn't. And you're sort of going, wait, how on earth is that even possible? But then you realise it is possible and you were stupid for not seeing it in the first place. And it's good because throughout the book you've figured out already which characters you like, which characters you don't like, and just your general thoughts on the characters in general. And then all of a sudden there's these plot twists and you are trying to figure out who's good, who's evil, who you can trust and who you like. And it's so conflicting and it's amazing. And then there's a really, really big plot twist right at the end, like within the last few pages, and then the book ends. And you're left sitting there going, where's the next book? I'm afraid to tell you that the next book doesn't come out till next year. The good thing is though, um, a prequel novella called Queen Song comes out in September. So I'm eager for that now. I love Victoria Aveyard's writing. She has managed to create a world that I just sort of want to be in. Maybe just be like a fly on a wall, maybe. Or a silver. I reckon that'd be I reckon being a silver would be pretty good. Um but there are so many questions I want to know, not just plot twist wise, not just plot wise, like we're going to get those questions in the next book, but there are questions like the history of the world itself, like what else has happened, how, like, how did the Silvers discover they had powers and how did they manage to oppress the Reds and then why do the Silvers even have power? Why do they have silver blood in the first place? And then the big question, how come Mare has these powers? Why did she get them? And I'm pretty sure all these questions will get some sort of answers in the next two books in the trilogy. So I can't wait to learn about the world even more. Not just the characters, but the characters are good, but the world is pretty good as well. So this book is seriously draining. I was fearing I was going to be in a reading slump when I finished. But luckily I picked up some more books so be warned if you're going to read this be prepared you may fall into a reading slump because it's draining in a good way now there are some similarities between red queen and a few other books that i've read one of them is the hunger games there are a few aspects in here that i can see that are very hunger gamesy especially sort of the rebellion and the way the world is laid out and then the other book that i felt it was kind of similar to was switched and the true trilogy by amanda hocking when mayor is trying to learn how to be a princess and be an elite it's sort of the same as what happens to wendy and how she has to learn how to be a princess. I have heard that it's also meant to be similar to Divergent, which I have yet to read, as well as Graceling. So if you like any of those books or any fantasy books, then you'll definitely love this. If you just like reading, you'll love this, I think. But the only thing I can actually fault this book on is the wait till the sequel. I could not find anything really wrong with this book because the few things that you thought were a bit odd throughout the story then made sense later on when you got your plot twists and just more character development. The characters were really good and relatable and interesting and they had a lot of depth to them that you want to know more about. And even though there are some things left hanging, obviously we're going to be getting like more explanation and more storyline and more backstory in the next book and obviously this novella as well. So I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and I don't regret it. I absolutely loved it and I want to read it again like now. I will probably maybe reread it after the novella. I'll definitely be rereading it next year though before the sequel comes out. It was just so good and I can't wait for the next book and I need it now. So is it possible I can get it now? So I think I managed to convey to you how good this book is but one last time. I don't care if you leave this video right now, but I'm telling you now, go and buy this book or get it off your bookshelf and start reading it. And I don't care if you've read it already, go reread it because it's so good and I loved it and I just want more and it's beautiful. So that's it for today guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be doing some more review videos in the future and let me know below if you want to see some reviews of the books I've already read this year um, and if you want to see reviews of older books, not necessarily newish books. Um, I have, If you go check out my blog you will see my review for Red Queen as well as all the other books I've read this year. And make sure you follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook and Instagram for just really more bookish stuff and goodness and books. It's good. And stay tuned for more videos. I've got a list of seven videos that are coming out in the next two weeks. So it's all happening here. There's just videos galore. Um, I think that's all for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.